Jesus from the outreach of it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. In Revelation chapter 16. There's my Bible. I should have left it right up here, Brian. That yes. would have been better. Revelation chapter 16. And uh, if you want to stand, we'll read a few, pa- a few verses here to get started. A couple of things I forgot to say. Gifts of the Gospel is the 17th. And then um, some of the ladies have been having some fellowship together on Mondays when they come clean. And Brenda just asked me to ask if any of you ladies would like to help and be a part of the three C's, coffee, cleaning, and I can't remember what the other C is. Um, not coughing, but, cl- but complaining. That's what it was. That's what, no, I'm just teasing, just teasing. Brian, I didn't, he said it. I just repeated it. I shouldn't have said it. That was a joke, wasn't it? But uh, anyway, if you're interested, uh, and many hands make light work on Monday mornings, uh, we'll get you with Brenda. Revelation 16, verse 1. I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. The second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. The third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of water, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. We'll see how far we get with this, but let's be seated and we'll pray together. Father, thank you for the word of God and thank you for... Um, the study that we've been embarked on, and I pray that you'd help us to learn and glean and uh, just uh, grab something from these uh, passages as we study. And then God, uh, boy, I'm so thankful that I'm not going to be part of this time. I'm looking forward to being in heaven and laying all the burdens down and then hopefully uh, to lay down some crowns as well. Uh, we love you and I praise you. Pray for wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. So, the first thing I notice is I have no idea where my notes are at. Oh, there they are. That's a good thing. Um, <clears throat> Revelation 16 is carrying out some of what 14 and 15 was telling us about. These are the last vials of the wrath of God. And that word last in uh, chapter 15, uh, sometimes when preachers say, this is my last point, you know that's relative, right? You always know that's a relative term. And doesn't actually mean it might be the last thing I say, but <clears throat> this word last is used in Scripture a bunch of times. But interesting, just, uh, just doing a little study on that word last uh, in the New Testament, the last plagues um, is, is given to us, and then later on, one of the angels that had the last plagues also shows to John the bride. And I, I love that, that even through some of these horrible, painful, tribulation events, it leads us to a bright ending. You know, say amen to that. Uh, there's there's a, a back of the book, and if you haven't read the last page, we win, right? And, and I, I just, I don't, you forget when you're in the middle of these details that um, you don't get all the final uh, thought of it there. And so anyway, it says that um, uh, the, the last, the last, uh, uh, plagues in chapter 15, and here they are, these seven vials of the wrath of God uh, poured by these um, angels that had them. The last time in Jude, is talk, it talks about mockers. The last time in 1 John talks about there'll be Antichrist. In the last days in 2 Peter, it talks about scoffers. It warns us about treasures being heaped up for the last days. The last times... <clears throat> and um, the last enemy is death in 1 Corinthians 15. The last times in Timothy, it talks about departing from the faith. Perilous times shall come. This, the spirit um, that's poured out in the last days of Acts uh, is the beginning of the last times, the last days, but there's a lot of negative things that, that's described by the word last in the New Testament. There's... Um, uh, at, but at the same time, you know what does remain the last time is it tells us that he'll speak to us through his son. It tells us that uh, 
the saints will be around and Jesus will be around in the last times. And so Revelation has a lot of negative, but the things that will remain is Jesus, His Word, and His saints, and we will prevail over the final uh, outcome of this book. In, in chapter 16, it tells us that the first one has to do with sores upon the men which had the mark of the beast. If it's not bad enough that they took the mark that will damn them, now it's worse that because they have that mark, there's going to be sores uh, that, that come upon them. It's similar to the, what's mentioned as boils in uh, the book of Exodus. These seven last plagues, four of them are repeats of the plagues in Egypt. Interesting. The, uh, the boils or the sore, the blood rivers, darkness, and then great hail are also uh, were recorded in the book of Exodus when the children of Israel were leaving Egypt. And so as uh, the Lord's bringing the wrath down upon Egypt to let his people go, he's also bringing down the same wrath upon the world to let the whole world know. And both times it was to make himself known to a world that had rejected him or did not understand him. Egypt should have realized we need to get it straight. Brother Bryce, will you hit the lights off and back on and see if it fixes that light bulb that makes me feel like I'm in a disco dance club up here? Okay. <laughs> see if it goes back on. Oh, it's going to be okay. I'm just going to have to like jam while I'm preaching up here. Uh, that bulb is going out or something and it's just going to. I don't know if you're getting a little psychedelic treatment over there, but uh, um, I, I can just uh, sense it on my peripheral vision. <clears throat> so uh, I'll just keep going. But anyway, um, this, th these, these plagues that were in Egypt were to let the world know that God was real. It wasn't just punishment being dished out. If they would have let these people go in the first plague, there wouldn't have been the rest of the nine. There'd have never been the death of the firstborn if they would have uh, let him go during the frogs, right? And look on down to verse number nine, just, just in the middle of this. The Bible says, And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues, and they what? They repented not to give him glory. So the outcome of these plagues is not a incoming of receiving the Lord. No, he's going to have to come with wrath because they did not open their hearts and their hands to him. First of all, Clarence Larkin, in his study of this, he makes the point that these are still future plagues to happen. The book of Revelation has not already been played out. And, and uh, there's, there's folks that would interpret different things that maybe have already happened with comparisons to history of revolution and wars and, and rivers being filled with blood. I've heard it said that the river uh, in Germany during World War II looked like it was full of blood uh, when, when that, uh, I can't, the, what's the right name of that river that flows around? The Rhine, yeah, and just looked like it was full of blood because of the soldiers that were killed in there. But th these things are future because if they were past, then Jesus would have already come back and, and set up his kingdom. We wouldn't still be preaching grace if there's a mark of the beast already in the middle of these things. And so th these things are all future. And then we've even had a foreshadow of them by seeing that some of them took place in Egypt. And I believe Exodus. I believe the whole book uh, from Genesis to Revelation. But I believe that there was darkness. I believe there was hail. I believe that there were boils. I believe there was blood. All those things. Yeah, I just believe it. And so it's not hard for someone who already believes to believe these things can happen in the future. It's going to be a very interesting uh, um, a spin on, on the news cycle. But you can tell... The, the good Darlene said, I wonder how they're going to explain it when we're gone, you know, and, and, and all these things happen. But you can tell just by our modern news cycle that things don't get talked about. If you watch the regular news, you don't hear anything about Twitter. Yeah. Now, you hear everything about Twitter when they didn't like it, but you don't hear nothing about Twitter when they don't like it. Yeah. And not to get in politi politics and things, but it's just things, things can happen that no one wants to talk about. 
Um, I don't know if Bryce, if you were able to pull that website up that I, I sent to you a little bit ago, but if we get down to um, verse 12, the, the Euphrates River drying up, you, you know it's drying up right now, like exponentially. It's been drying up for years and Turkey put dams on the river where it starts from so they could produce electricity. And there were agreements that Syria and Iraq would get so much water per minute or per day um, that from Turkey, but Turkey hasn't uh, really carried out their end of the bargain. And so the river Euphrates has been lowering for years. Now the last two years are satellite images like ridiculously different just in the last two years of time where it just, it's totally drying up and like unavoidable or un, undeniable. Go, go on down a little bit if you can, scroll down there and there's a satellite image that you can, you can go back and forth on. Keep scrolling down. Yeah, okay, scroll that to the, to the right. There's two years ago. This is an area of this river. Now go to the left and this is May of 2022, same area. <laughs> from Reuters. Uh, They're doing non farming. Uh, farming? That, that would hurt uh, that. Well, but this is just regions of, around the river that were being able to be farmed and now they're not. There used to be rice fields, but now the basins and some, it's just drying up. There's articles all over about, and, and God can dry it up supernaturally. Y'all say amen? It, it, we don't need it to see it, but. This is like sparking news. Wow, this is a biblical proportion. This Euphrates River being dried up. Uh, there's a YouTube video now, uh, just it was posted yesterday, uh, of like uh, caverns underneath where the river level was, and now they're open up and there's steps down into them. And the locals say, we think that that leads to where the angels are bound in the river, that cavern. <laughs> they, that's what the locals say about the, because it just, it's been hewn out and, and uh, shown up. It just, I, we don't need to have websites and scientific confirmation of what's going to happen. But it surely should help point people, oh, what, is, what does Revelation say? Are you kidding me? It talks about being dry, are your phrase drying up and it's happening? How do... How does that happen? Um, so God can use whatever circumstances He wants to bring Israel back to its land or to make what He prophesied in Revelation come to pass. Uh, the point is, we have it ahead of time written down so we can know uh, for all time that God is true. So first of all, this future. Then the, the first plague is a sore upon the men which had the mark. It was, uh, their flesh was affected by their sin. Can I say that one more time? Their flesh will be affected by their sin. Does that happen today? Do we have flesh problems, body problems because of sin problems? Hello? Sexually transmitted diseases? You won't have them if you have... If you have one spouse from one house or one wife for one life or however you want to put the, the, pair of the, um, the poetry together. Uh, we, we understand that someone was praying for a, a somebody that smoked, that smoked their life. And uh, I just heard of a lady that, that uh, COPD and, and walked out uh, to take a, a, a smoke and, and looked at that cigarette and just flipped it out and said, look what it's got me. Look what it's got me. All kinds of problems affect our body that are really just spiritual problems. Discipline following the Lord or obeying the Lord. Now, does that mean people that obey the Lord never die? No, we, we're physically going to die because of the curse of sin. But can we die before our time? Yes, just ride in a car with me a little while. Amen. It can happen. It can happen. It can happen. <clears throat> so in this passage... It doesn't affect those that don't have the mark. It doesn't affect those that aren't worshiping the beast. It affects those that are worshiping the devil, that have chosen to go against God, who refuse to repent. Their sores on their bodies? Wow. I thought this interesting. Again, I was reading Clarence Larkin's book, and this is early 1900s. Clarence Larkin said, boils are caused by bad blood. Interesting. Now, I know that our, today our boils are caused from 
staff, from MRSA, from all kinds of hair follicles. You know, there's all kinds of reasons for a boil, <clears throat> but it's always caused from something on the inside. <laughs> and that's what brought death in the first place was Adam and Eve's longing on the inside to get something that was forbidden on the outside. Boy, there's just some amazing um, truths and revelations there how that our flesh is affected by our sin. 99.9% .9 of all of our problems are usually sin problems. But whether, whether, I'm quoting Brother Will, the theologian back there in the sound booth. And there are things happen to, to righteous people. Things happen to people who are doing the right things. It's not, you can't just, oh, I, 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 I always uh, tease if somebody gets sick after we take communion, I'm like, mm-hmm, what have you not did right when you took communion, you know? But, and it does say that if we take it unworthily, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Not to, not to make light of it, but, you know, if you, if you catch a cold the week after communion, you're like, I don't want to go to church. People are going to think I'm in sin, and, and that, that, that's, not, that's not what we would d discern from that. We all... Uh, do you all notice the flu's back again after two years uh, hiatus in, in our culture? The flu just m miraculously came back upon our, our culture. Sickness is going to be around no matter what you name it or what you call it. Amen? That, we're going to die. We're going to die from all these things. It's interesting, though, in this plague that these things will come only upon those that had a mark. Only upon those that worship the beast. You know, hell's only going to be for those who reject Jesus Christ. There's not going to be anybody, any Christians in hell. There's not going to be anybody that, that believes in Jesus in hell. It's a select consequence for those that reject him. In this wrath of God, the wrath is precise. It's not just randomly given. The wrath of God is revealed upon all ungodliness but in this passage, it starts out being thrown upon those who worship the beast and have the mark and uh, worship his image. It's an, a fellow noisome and grievous sore. I thought, what in the world, what kind of a noise does that sore make? Maybe it's the moaning and the groaning of having it. Boy, that's a horrible sound when you can walk through a, a, a hospital or a place where you can hear groanings. Man, it's, a, it's just a, um, uh, a humbling sound. <clears throat> I don't know, and I'm not going to be here, but these boils are caused by bad, bad blood, and we're hearing more and more about those things with blood. Interesting. The Bible says the life of the flesh is in the blood. And your eternal life, it's in the blood. Yeah. The blood of Jesus. <clears throat> We've all, we're, we, in, in our uh, uh, technology um, explosion, which is really just the knowledge of good and evil, there's some great things that come with technology. I mean, Rick, we're talking this morning, and there's some horrible things that come from technology. It, it's like when Adam and Eve, they, they tasted of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, they got both. Well, this internet's amazing that you can send messages and pictures all around the world. It's interesting, Kumar can take a picture of me while I'm preaching and send it back to me <clears throat> while I'm preaching, and he's in India. But there's also horrible things that come across this. And guard your heart, guard your eyes. Don't, don't take that second look. Boy, uh, it's just it's miserable to think of, of, the, uh, of the, the wreck and the mess that the Satan will make of people who are trapped into um, things that they should never see or watch or look at. The sore is upon those that had the mark. It fulfills Revelation 14. Look at verse 9 through 11. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Well, now it's being poured out. The, the angel warned them, prophesied it, and now it's being carried out in chapter 16. Can I just tell you, everything God warns us about will be carried out in the Bible. Well, it hasn't happened to me. It will. Well, I haven't been affected by it so far. So far is a, a very important term. 
uh, the, the, what's warned is uh, carried out in just two chapters later. I wrote this down. You would think suffering would surely turn somebody to repentance. And I've seen that happen before. Haven't you known someone that had something bad happen and then that's when they realize I need God? But it doesn't. It's not the fix. Or we would be pouring suffering on everyone. I'd tell my jokes to the whole world if that's what brought people to repentance. Amen. Suffering, suffering doesn't bring someone to Christ. <clears throat> it, it's a soft heart that brings someone to Christ. The uh, boils in, ex, in Exodus just caused them to harden their heart. And as we read in verse 9, they repented not. They refused to give glory. There's, there's uh, um, <clears throat> that hope and plea that everything will go well for our children, our grandchildren, and we want things to be better for them than it was for us. But that's not always better for their spiritual growth. Because some of the hardships that you've had is what softened your heart to receive the greatest thing you ever got. Y'all say amen to that? So you don't want to remove those things from your loved one's lives if that's what will turn them to Christ. But just praying for hardship doesn't always turn people to Christ. Just a reception of God's will is what turns people to Christ. It can happen in a good time. It can happen in a, in a horrible time. I, I don't know when it'll happen in your time, but I hope it happens. Amen? These things did not cause people to repent, even though I would think it'd be a great time to repent. Wow, boils are on everybody that's got the mark of the world system. Uh, maybe there's a problem with that mark. And I can see we're getting closer and closer, and there's not less talk about vaccines, even though there's more, less fear about COVID-19. There's more talk about passports. Um, I heard one guy said China is just the beta program of the rest of the world, what you're hearing about right now. Just the beta program for the rest of the world, what you're hearing that's going on and, and being leaked out little bit by little bit. I don't know, but this, this uh, picture here of boils, look at verse 3. Then it says blood. <clears throat> the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea. And it became as the blood of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. That reference to soul there is just consciousness. And animals have consciousness. I don't think animals have a spirit. I don't think that they um, have that eternal, uh, that, that being of, of like we do. But I do think they have personality, right? They, they have a, an, um, an inner being just besides their flesh. And so... Verse 3 says that the sea, whether that's a local or all the water that's not fresh rivers, I'm not sure, but it says here that it became like blood. And then in verse 4, the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. Everywhere you look, you got a blood problem. It's on the people that have a mark, they got a blood problem. Whatever, mercy, whatever you want to say, causing boils. Then you look in the water, there's a blood problem. Then you look in the river, there's a blood problem. And you know what the problem is? They don't have the blood of Jesus. That's the problem. Or they wouldn't be there in the midst of it all. If you had the blood of Jesus, you wouldn't have boils. You wouldn't have blood. You would... Hello? You can realize that that's the problem with the world today is they don't have the right blood. We, we know in blood transfusions, you can't always give your blood to somebody else unless you have the right blood. You, you'd like to give your loved one, but if yours is a different type, they say, we, you can't help me. You know, any other blood cannot help you eternally besides the blood of Jesus Christ. And I know I'm preaching to the choir, but boy, you can just see that, that resonating through this passage that there's a blood problem. Notice in verse 5, I heard the angel of the waters. And uh, uh, I, I, I'm we're aware that angels can be territorial. There's an angel over Israel. There's an angel over the certain regions. There's this, the angel of the waters. And uh, uh, maybe there's an angel over your car. I hope I've got one. Amen. And uh, an angel over your, uh, your place of employment. An angel over your, 
uh, where your property is. I, I believe that there's little ones have angels that are constantly beholding his face, yeah. right? That's what the Bible says. Yeah. It's a comfort to know we've got ministering spirits. Angels came and ministered to Jesus when he was fasting in the wilderness for 40 days. Boy, I, I, I don't know how we can procure or, or uh, uh, tip them or do anything extra for them, but I'm glad we got them. And, and uh, I think that we just continue to obey the one that sends them on our behalf, right? But this angel of the waters, he said, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be, because thou hast, what's it say? Judged thus. If the most powerful beings that we're aware of besides the Lord say, You're righteous in your judgments, we probably ought to learn to agree, God, you're righteous in your judgments. And I don't always like what the judges said, but I think I ought to agree and get on the, in, in, in line with him what he says. I don't understand what all his judgments are, but they're true and righteous altogether. And this angel says, yep, they're getting what they're worthy of. They've shed the blood of saints and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Well, that phrase, thou art worthy to receive glory and honor and praise, but they are worthy to receive blood to drink. Makes me think of when the children of Israel made those golden images. Remember when Moses was on the mountain and they came down and Moses, oh, he was angry, broke all the Ten Commandments at once, right? And, uh, and then they ground up that golden calf. And you remember what they made them do? Drink it. Drink it. Your mom and dad ever wash your mouth out with soap? <laughs> I remember that one time. And it wasn't even my mom. It was Betsy Crocker, of all people. My friend Aaron grabbed the soap and washed our mouth. Oh! Ah. And once in a while, you put some on your plate, and your mom and dad say, you're going to eat that. You put on your, you're going to eat it. Boy, they, they're going to drink it. You're guilty of the blood, and now it's what you have to drink. Israel, you're going to drink that golden calf. Have you ever had to eat or drink or reap or eat what you've harvested? Maybe something that you didn't really want to have to reap and you've sowed it and now you've got to reap it and then he makes you eat it. That's a little nursery rhyme about the little red hen who sowed the wheat and, and hoed the wheat and harvested the wheat. And then she got to bake the bread. Everyone wanted to eat the bread. Well, no one wants to eat what we've got coming to us. But friend, righteous are thy judgments, O Lord. Remember when Eli was uh, confronted with the sin that he allowed to um, exist in his family. And Samuel said, this is what God said, Eli. And he, Eli said, God's righteous. That's what needs to happen. Wow. Boy, those are some tough pills to swallow. Um, but I think the more we praise the name of Jesus and rejoice over whatever he's done in our lives, the better off we're going to be. And the quicker we submit and just recognize that your judgments are right, your judgments are true. This angel did that. And then verse number eight. And I'll be done after we look at this verse. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God. Darling, you asked, what are people going to say when there's people missing? And I think this is what they're going to say when people are burning. We told you global warming was happening. We told you it was getting hotter. It's not God, it's us. It's the coal plants. It's the... It's the, uh, what, uh, whatever we want to blame it on. There will be global warming. Yeah. Revelation chapter 16 predicts it. The sun will get hotter, and there's no amount of human intervention that's going to stop the sun from getting hotter. Y'all say amen to that? Yeah. It's, it's just a um, mass propaganda to uh, bring in the coming of the Antichrist. But Terry? Sure. Everything will be blamed on something other than God. And it's just my, this, I've had this sci-fi uh, opinion that 
you know, we, we're constantly, oh, there, there's something out there. And there's, they've been releasing alien pictures and all kinds of government uh, photographs. You all heard this last couple of years, all kinds of, uh, and, and you know, Hollywood is really probably run by the FBI and CIA. I, I really think that they're in cahoots together. We know that Twitter and the FBI are in cahoots together now. We know that big tech and, and media is in, in, are, are hand in hand. Yeah. It doesn't matter, but we know it. Yeah. Nothing's being said about it because they are the ones who say what's being said. And, and Hollywood has, has been on a constant, uh, a constant um, uh, a binge on aliens and other world things. Where's Jesus going to come from when he fights the battle of Armageddon? And all the armies of the world are gathered to fight against him. I, I've always thought that they're going to explain that away with that people are missing because of, of an alien invasion. I could be wrong. Don't take that to the bank. But it's just my, my, my prediction is, and then seven years, they're getting ready to protect our planet because we've got to fight. They're coming back. And we're going to be ready to kill them when they come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are. We're going to be ready to protect our world. And we, we, they, they've wanted, um, you know, there's all kinds of talk about about um, population decrease. You heard things like that from the World Economic Forum. You know why they're talking about that? Because it's going to happen in Revelation. It's going to happen. Well, we want it to happen. We, we plan for this to happen. We, we need it to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen whether you think it is or not. Right. And the sun's going to get hot or whatever you think it is. Or, that's my opinion, Darlene. So it's a, it's a good question. I think that global warming will be a, a convenient ex, uh, explanation. Um, other worlds and other, other um, uh, planets will be a convenient explanation. But we know the explanation. We went to heaven, and everybody else is stuck here with a blood problem. And the sun got hotter because the angel had power over it, not because your coal factory was burning too much um, fossil fuels or your, uh, or your whatever. And, and so... Um, I guess that the, the, the moral of the story is don't worry about the world saying. Let's worry about God tell, what God tells us to say. They can say whatever they want. We're supposed to say Jesus is coming. They can talk about this cataclysmic problem. We can talk about Christ fixing problems. They can talk about uh, world depopulation. We can talk about heaven gaining population. So, and we live in this world and, and we're pilgrims passing through and you know there's some connection to all of this stuff, but in Revelation 16, boy, it's a miserable chapter to think about. But I'm glad we're not there. Amen. And it just reminds me what I should be talking about and what I should be uh, uh, bringing up in the midst of what is going to come up and, and carry on right there. Okay. Any question on those few, first few verses, Darlene? I'm sure some did. I'm sure that some did. Uh, there was one of those plagues where there was a warning to get your animals out before the hail came, and some did. Uh, there, there was just like a mixed multitude. There were some that didn't believe that went out with, with Israel from Egypt. Some of them didn't believe. There was a mixed multitude. So I'm sure that there were those that believed. just have to keep talking because there are there are um, constant new people that are coming conscious of what's going on or or unconscious about God and we need to let them know the lady I preached a funeral for yesterday she was taken to Sunday school and uh, they said that after Sunday school her teacher took her to McDonald's and that was the first time she'd ever went out to eat in her life and she went over to her Sunday school teacher's house, and that was the first time she realized that there was a sense of normalcy that was possible, where people sat down at the table and talked nice to each other and prayed. And she said, I'm going to live my life differently. And she put her kids through Christian school. She had two boys. She, pay, she became 
uh, a realtor and won many awards. And she said, I did all those things so I could make sure my kids had a different, different outlook and experience than what I had. And you know what? When you realize the truth, you can make sure somebody else has a different outcome than what they would have by not knowing Jesus. And that's what you do. And be grateful and be um, appreciative and whatever it took to get you to Jesus. I grew up in a, in a godly home. That's what got me to Jesus. Some people grew up in a, in a drunkard's home. That's what got them to Jesus. Some people grew up without any home, and that's what got them to Jesus. But whatever got you to Jesus, use that to help somebody else get them to Jesus. Amen? Good stuff. Any other question? I thought before we go. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Lord, Revelation 16 is a, it's a wrath chapter. It's a rough chapter. And uh, thank you for giving us some um, silver linings through it that uh, you're good. Your judgments are true. Uh, you've given your blood so we wouldn't have to drink blood and be a part of all that blood. Lord, thank you for sacrificing so we could have a sure home in heaven. And God, I pray that you'd help us as a church to be constantly mindful, constantly mindful of what you've done for us and how fortunate we are, how great